Good evening, everyone. So my next topic of discussion, which I'm going to discuss with you is on the topic cephalosporins, which are the other groups of the beta lactam antibiotics, cephalosporins. And before I start my video, I want to request you, if you like this video, and if it is helpful to you, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel, that is Dr. Nithikan's Pharmacology Discussion. So now I'm going to start with cephalosporins. Now, this is the beta lactam ring and the five sided ring, the dehydropyrimidine ring, which is the different in all the beta lactam antibiotics. And this is the structure of the cephalosporins. These are chemically related to these penicillins and they're semi synthetic derivatives of fungus cephalosporium. These are broad spectrum. These take both against gram negative, gram positive, and anaerobic bacteria. These are water soluble and these are acid resistant. Properties these kill the bacteria, these are bacteriocidal, and then mechanism of action is same that is, they inhibit the cell wall synthesis. Binding site is different, so spectrum differs. They lack cross reactivity with penicillins. And these are well tolerated, less toxic than penicillins. These are less toxic than penicillins. These are well tolerated. And the spectrum of activity differs. Resistance is due to alternation in the penicillin binding proteins or impermeability of the drug can occur. Or there can be production of cephalosporinases, which are the enzymes which break down the cephalosporins. And thus the action of drug will be inhibited. Classification can be on the basis of antibacterial spectrum, on the basis of chronology, on the basis of potency and susceptibility to beta lactamases. Classification spectrum now uh, the cephalosporins can be divided into first, second, third, fourth, and fifth generation cephalosporins. The first generation cephalosporins are basically these are uh, effective against gram positive bacteria. Second and third are effective both against gram positive and gram negative. Fourth generation are effective against gram negative bacteria. And fifth generation are effective against MRSA, that is the methicillin resistance DAF aureus. And uh, the second generation, these are also effective against gram positive, gram negative, and anaerobes. And third generation, they have the widest spectrum of activity. They are effective against both gram positive and gram negative bacteria. And the first generation are CEPA, the drug's name. These are the first generation, second generation, third generation, fourth generation cephalosporins. Now, the first edition, they have the E after the CEF. Their name has E after the SF. There's Cephazolin, Cephalothin, Cephadroxyl, Cephalexin, Cepharidin. Second edition, these are the different type of the uh, cephalosporins. Uh, these are exceptional. Fourth edition have PI in their name, Pyrome, Cephipime, Cephipyrome. And the uh, role in the name is in the uh, fifth generation. This is septa rolin and septobip role. Role in the name. And the third generation are the drugs which end with me, uh, me, one and ten. So they can be cefatoxime, cefazidine, ceftaxime, ceftizoxime, ceftaxone, cefopirazone, ceftinil. Ceftidotorin, uh, Cefpodoxime, Proxitin, Ceftibutin, and Cefixim. This they end with me, 10, and 1. And second generation, these are the exceptional. The other drugs which are not ending with any other things, they are the second generation, that is Cefotetan, Cefroxime, Cefacular. And Cefacular is the second generation, even though its name has Cef and A after Cef. It is the exception, cephaclor, it is second generation cephalosporin. The first generation, these are parental are cephalothin and cephazolin and oral are cephalexin, cephadroxin. Most nephrotoxic is the cephradine cephalosporin and it is withdrawn now. Second generation, they have the cephroxime, cephoctizin, parental and oral cephroxime, exital and cephaclor. They penetrate the CSF. Third generation, they end with me, one, and ten. So these are the drugs, <coughs> parental and oral. 
cefetoxime, cefetizoxime, ceftriaxone, ceftazidine, and cefopirazone, oral cefexime, ceforoxime, ceftinib, ceftibutin, and ceftitorin. And they penetrate the CSF and they are safe in renal failure because they are secreted in the bile and they are also excreted in the, uh, they go to the GAT and they are excreted in the feces. So these are safe in renal failure also because they are not excreted in the kidneys. Fourth situation, they have pi in their name. Cephepime and cephepirom, these are path entered. Different swellosporins differ in antibacterial spectrum. I've already told you. Potential against different organisms. Susceptibility to beta lactamases. And the route of administration, majority not metabolized or excreted by kidney. And uh, probane acids in the tubular secretion. So they have a shorter half life. A local irritancy after injection can occur. First condition effective against gram positive, second, both against gram positive and gram negative, and also anaerobes, and third, augmented gram negative activity. And these uh, four generation, these are resistant to beta lactamases, and they're having the both gram positive, but more gram negative potencies more. Their action is against gram negative more. And fifth generation, these are effective against MRSA. Now, for excellent against the Gram positive cocci, good against Clepsilla E. coli proteus, first condition. These are effective against Staph aureus, Streptococcus, Anthropic Streptococci, a shock like Clepsilla proteus. And effective against anaerobes also, Peptococcus, Peptostreptococcus, Bacteroid fragilis. These are not for MRSA and Bacteroid fragilis. Pharmacokinetics are their well absorbed orally. Cephalothin IM is very painful and is given by IV root. Except for cefazolin, which is 80 to 90 percent protein bound, others exhibit poor protein binding. They have a good distribution to most tissues except in CSF, so cannot be used in meningitis. So they have less penetration in CSF, so they cannot be used against meningitis. And they're primarily excreted through the kidney and sensitive to beta lactamase enzyme degradation. Probein acid, it increases the plasma half-life. Cephalexin is highly concentration in bile, so it is excreted in the bile. Cephadroxin, it has better tissue penetration, exerts sustained action at site of action, excreted unchanged in urine. Uses are this can be given in staphylococcal infection, surgical prophylaxis, and not for meningitis. So these can be given in UTI, cellulitis, minor staph infection, cellulitis, soft tissue infections. Cephazolin is a drug for prophylaxis before cardiac surgeries and orthopedic prosthesis due to its good tissue penetration. Second generation, these are effective uh, for organisms where first generation is also effective. And these are also active against the gram negative bacteria and also against the anaerobes. These are the uh, antibacterial microbial spectrum, staph, strep to anaerobic streptococci, Neisseria gonorrhea, it, and pterobacter, Sershiocli, Haemophilus, Klebsiella proteus, and anaerobic organisms. Good CSF penetration, cefroxime and cefeclor. And they're having excellent against streptococcus, staph aureus, H. infancy, and enterobacteriaceae, very effective for meningitis and gonorrhea. They are having good oral bioavailability, cefeclor, cefroxime exital is an Easter pro drug. It crosses the blood brain barrier among the second generation. Only cefo, zictine is 80 to 90 percent protein bound, while others have poor protein binding. More stable to beta lactamase degradation than the first generation. And IM injections are painful, so we are giving the IV injections. Excreted unchanged to kidney and probane acid increases the plasma half life. Cephotexin is also effective against bacteroids, fragilis, seracea, anaerobic, and mixed surgical infections and lung abscess. Clinical uses, this can be given in sinusitis, second generation, or titus media, lower respiratory tract infections, and in caused by hemophilus in frenzy. Mixed anaerobic infections, as in peritonitis, diverticulitis, caused by bacteroid fragilis, community acquired pneumonias, caused by beta lactamase producers, H. in frenzy, and Klebsiella pneumonia. 
These are UTI, minus defined focal infections, stop tissue infections, ceproxime is the only second generation that is effective in meningitis as it causes the blood brain barrier. Third generation, these are effective against gram negative, gram positive, and they're having the augmented gram negative activity. So these are effective against enterobacteria C, Proteus, Clepsilla, E. coli, Salmonella. Beta lectum is producing hemophilus, Neisseri. They can be produced, they can be active against them. Most have good CNS penetration, CSF penetration. Miss Streptococcus pneumonia, Streptococcus anaerobic Streptococci, and Neisseria gonorrhea. Assertia, Enterobacter, Assertia coli, Haemophilus, Clepsilla, Proteus, Cidomonas. These are effective against third generation. And Cifopirazone and Ceftriaxone excreted to bile. So they do not require the renal uh, failure. Uh, they are safe in renal failure. These are excreted to the feces. Highly resistant to beta lactamases. These third generation, these are highly resistant to beta lactamases and they can pass blood brain barriers to use for meningitis also. And the third generation, they have a wide spectrum of activity. These can be used against meningitis, gonorrhea, chancroid, community quite pneumonia, Lyme disease, UTI, abdominal sepsis, septicemia, multi drug resistant typhoid fever anaerobic and hospital acquiring infections, nosocomial infections, pseudomonal infections in immunocompromised patients. Means all these infections, we can give third generation sphedosporins. So these can be given meningitis, caused by Nisiria, meningitis, pneumococci, gonorrhea, chancroid, community acquired pneumonia, Lyme disease, UTI, and multidrug resistant typhoid fever. Ceftoxime can be given in meningitis, gonorrhea, community-acquired infections, in respiratory tract infections, in anaerobic and hospital-acquired infections, genitourinary and abdominal infections also. Cifopirazone can be given in meningitis, gonorrhea, bacteremia, septicemia, and also against pseudomonas. <coughs> Good for salmonella, typhi, and bacteria, fragilis, pseudomonal UTI also and infections in immunocompromised patients. Ceftazidine can be effective against pseudomonas and uh, ceftazidine and aminoglycosides is a treatment of choice in pseudomonal meningitis. This is useful for nosocomial infections, more effective against bacteria, it's fragilis than ceftoxine. This is ceftoxine. Cefixim is effective against respiratory, unitary, urinary, and uh, uh, biliary infections, gonorrhea, not effective against staph and pseudomonas. Cefporexime is effective against staph aureus. Fourth generation are resistant to hydrolysis by beta lactamases, to which third generation is susceptible. Good activity against pseudomonas, enterobacteriasis, staph aureus, and streptococcus. These are effective against gram negative bacteria, basically, and these are resistant to beta lactamases also. And so, this is the spectrum of activity streptococcus and staph aureus, and Assertia, Clepsilla, pseudomonas, and Neisseria, Haemophilus, Proteus. Pharmacokinetics, zwitterionic compounds could be given by IM and IV. Protein binding is only 10 to 20% and widely distributed in tissues and body uh, fluids with uh, will accumulation in CSF. It's eliminated 85 to 90% through kidney and this is resistant to beta lactamases. and these are having wide spectrum of activity against gram negative bacteria. Highly active against hemophilus neisseria used for penicillin resistance genes of streptococcus and enterobacter infections. This is the spectrum of activity. Empiritic ther therapy for febrile neutropenia, hospital acquired infections, pneumonia, bacteremia, septicemia, UJ, and respiratory tract infection. This is the uh, fifth generation septarolin. These are effective against streptococci and MRSC and less gram negative coverage in fourth generation. No pseudomonas activity, and this can be used in com complicated skin and soft tissue infections, community acquired pneumonia. Adverse reactions are hypersensitivity reactions like anaphylaxis, fevers, injections, nephritis, granulocytopenia, hemolytic anemia. 
same thing hypersensitive reaction they're also having the disulfiram like reaction some drugs cep uh, cephalosporins nephrotoxicity hepatotoxicity diarrhea hypoproteinemia there is decrease in prothrombin levels are also seen after intramuscular injection, there can be severe pain. In intravenous injection, there can be thrombophlebitis. Renal toxicity can occur. Interstitial nephritis and tubular necrosis. Hypoprothrombonemia, bleeding disorder, super infection common with second and third uh, generation cephalosporins, that is, the pseudomembranous colitis can occur. Cephalosporins are not reliable in penicillin resistance, streptococcus pneumoniae. Methicillin resistant staph aureus and staph epidermidis, coagulase nectus to phylococci, enterococcus, listeria monocytogenes, legionella pneumophilia, clostridium difficile, pseudomonas maltophilia, campylobacter duogeny, and acinobacter species. Means these are not rival in these uh, antimicrobial spectrum. Adverse drug reactions already told you, same thing. Other beta lactam antibodies in uh, cellular structure are like beta lactamase inhibitors and monobactams, which have one thing in their structure. These are astronum and carbapenems like doripenum, inmipenum, artapenum, meropenum. Beta lactamase inhibitors are these inhibit the beta lactamase enzyme. So where these are used in addition to the uh, penicillins or in addition to cephalosporins. So they can be effective in conjugation with the uh, cephalosporins and penicillins. These are given in conjunction to beta-lactam antibiotics. Although beta-lactam inhibitors have little antibiotic activity of their own, they instead inhibit the activity of beta-lactamases that allow penicillin-like antibiotics to work, thereby conferring bacterial resistance. Hence, beta-lactamase inhibitors are often given in combination with penicillins to tackle the problem of resistance caused by the the presence of beta lactamases from bacterial cells like clav is the amoxicillin and uh, clavulonic acid can be given. Salbectum is combined with ampicillin and tazobectum with piprocillin. Monobectums, these are having the monocyclic beta lactam thing. These are resistant to beta lactamases and effective against gram negative rods. And they have no activity against gram positive bacteria. Penicillin allergic patients tolerate astronom without reaction. Means they are also, uh, they have, do not show the gloss uh, allergy, uh, these monobactams, uh, like the other penicillins and cephalosporins. So, astronomy can uh, show no reaction, no an allergic reaction can be there. Carbapenems is imipenem, imipenem is the gram, effectively is gram negative, gram positive, and anaerobic organisms. And imipenem in the humans is uh, deactivated by the dihydropeptidase enzyme in the kidneys. And uh, it is given with the silastatin, uh, which is the inhibitor of the dihydropeptidase enzyme. So imipenem is combined with silastatin for clinical use. And midopenem and atropenem are not degraded by renal dehydropeptidase. So these are the other carbapenems. These are not degraded by renal, renal dehydropeptidase. So silastatin is not required to be joined with them. Only with imipenem we join the silastatin because it is the dehydropeptidase inhibitor and does not break down the imipenem. So uh, I am at, atapenem is irritating, so it is formulated with 1% lidocaine. A carbapenem is used for pseudomonas aeruginosa resistant to other drugs and mixed aerobic and anaerobic infections. Thank you. That's all with the cephalosporins and other drugs like monobactams and carbapenems and beta lactamase inhibitors. I hope you understood my lecture. If this lecture be useful to you and if, if it is helpful to you, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel that is Dr. Nitikan's pharmacology discussion. Thank you. Be happy, be safe, be healthy, be blessed. Thank you.